Welcome to section 21.4c. Okay, gentle people, we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to talk about more functional groups. So the next one I want to talk to you guys about are esters. So again, we still have our carbonyl carbon, and that means the carbon double bonded to an oxygen. We have an R group or the rest of the molecule on one side. We have an oxygen and now a connected to that oxygen is going to be another R group. So this is going to be the general formula for esters. Now what you guys will see is I don't have any hydrogens attached to a super electronegative atom, so esters cannot hydrogen bond with themselves. But even though it doesn't have a donor hydrogen, it does have two acceptors. So if I put something that can donate hydrogen bonds like water, then this can participate in hydrogen bonding. So this would be somewhere like the aldehydes and ketones, where it's soluble in water, but not as good as acids or alcohols. And because it lacks those hydrogen bonds, again, it has higher boiling points than alkanes, but not as great as alcohols or acids. Now, before we get into naming esters, we have to talk about the synthesis of esters. And you'll see why we do this later. So one way to make an ester is if we do something called a condensation reaction. Condensation reaction are reactions in chemistry where you take reactants and you combine these reactants and extrude a small molecule. In addition, what you're going to do are going to combine parts of the reactants together into one major molecule. So to make an ester, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. I'm going to condense these two things together. The small molecule that I'm going to extract is water. And then I'm going to combine the rest of the molecules together into one big molecule. So let's take a look at this example. I'm going to combine propionic acid and ethanol together. So what's going to happen is here is my carboxylic acid, where I have R, C, double bond O, and an OH. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at my alcohol. So here's my alcohol. And so what you guys can say is your alcohol, your alcohol follows this general structure. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take an OH off your carboxylic acid, and you're going to combine it with the hydrogen off your alcohol. Now this is going to make the H2 molecule that you're extruding out of it. Now what you have left over are they themselves going to combine together. So what I'm going to do is take the rest of my carboxylic acid, which is going to be that carbonyl, and I'm going to hook it up to the rest of the alcohol, and this forms my ester. And so you can see that the ester is this right here, and this is the ester link. Now, understanding this reaction is going to allow you to name the ester. To name an ester, what you want to do is do what's called a retrosynthesis. So you start out with the ester and you ask yourself, what made that ester come together? So we know that the ester is made from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So we have to find out what carboxylic acid and alcohol this is made from. To do this, we have to remember where the ester linkage came. What you want to do is you want to draw a line in between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen in the ester. What you can say to yourself is the, the part of the molecule on the carbonyl carbon side, well, that is my carboxylic acid, so I'm going to put an OH on that side. And then what you can do is you can put an H on the side where the oxygen is. Now, once you know what acid and what alcohol your ester is made of, now you can go ahead and name that compound. You're going to go ahead and you're going to look at the acid it was created from. You're going to take the acid's name, you're going to take off the oic acid and replace it by OATE. And that is going to become the parent molecule. So in this example, we had butonic acid, and so I'm going to make the parent butononate. 
Now what you're going to do is that the alcohol is going to be considered the substituent. So you're going to drop the OL from the alcohol's name and replace it by a YL. And you're going to place that in front of your parent name. And so the name of this compound is ethyl butanonate because it's made from butonic acid and ethanol. Make sure you put a space between the substituent and the parent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and tell me what alcohol and carboxylic acid would make the ester shown below. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, just to remind you again, what you want to do is you want to cleave the bond that is in between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen in the ester itself. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the carbonyl carbon side of the molecule. And on that side, I'm going to put my OH. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an H onto that oxygen that I've left over. And then I'm going to draw the rest of the other side of that molecule. After I do that, I can take a look at what alcohol and acid were used to make this ester. So the acid was two carbons long, so that is going to be ethonic acid. The alcohol was one, two, three, four, five carbons long, and so that is pentanol. So that should have been your choice. Now, if there's branches on your ester, those branches came from the acid and alcohol that you used to construct your ester. So they are going to carry over when you start naming these compounds. So again, if I make my cleavage, this is my acid portion. And so what you'll see, there was a methyl on the second position of my acid. If I look at my alcohol side, one, two, and three, there was a methyl on the third position. So make sure that you carry those over when you put the name together for your ester. Now, one thing is you can go ahead and remove the designation of where that alcohol resides because the alcohol no longer exists because it has been esterified. So in this case, the one designating the alcohol position on pentanol is removed. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and switch gears. Let's talk about the haloalkanes or the acyl halides. Now, this functional group is kind of an interesting one because this functional group has one of the lowest priorities. This has a lower priority than a simple alkyl substituent. So what that means is that you can kind of consider fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine equivalent to a methyl. So you are just going to tell me where the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine reside. So because it doesn't take priority, we still consider these things alkanes with this substitution. So in this case, I have three carbons long. So we still call this a propane because that halogen doesn't take priority. And then I just tell you where the halogen resides on. And in this case, it's the first carbon. On the second molecule, again, one, two, three carbons or this molecule has the parent name propane. Now we go ahead and tell you where the substituents are. And like I said, just consider a halogen, a normal alkyl substituent. So bromo and methyl appear in the two position. Remember to alphabetize B comes before M. And so that's why you'll see it as two bromo, two methyl propane. All right, the last functional group that I want you guys to be responsible for are the amines. Now the amines have a single bond between a carbon and a nitrogen. Now I'm not gonna delve too much in the naming of amines, it gets super complicated. So all that I want you guys to know about amines is one, I want you to be able to recognize it. So just that single carbon nitrogen bond and the next thing is I want you to identify a primary, secondary, and tertiary amine. And so what you can do is you can look at the nitrogen itself and you count how many R groups there are. So in this case, what we will see is that there's only one R group on that nitrogen. And so that means it's a primary amine. 
This nitrogen has two R groups on it, so secondary. And as you guys have guessed, if I have a nitrogen with three R groups, it's called a tertiary amine. You guys should also note that amines are very good bases. All right, gentle people, why don't we finish off with an eye clicker question? Go ahead and look at this molecule and tell me what functional groups you see that are present. Okay, the best way to tackle this, ladies and gentlemen, is to look for anything that is not a carbon-hydrogen single bond. So what I see here at the end is a carbonyl carbon, and what I'll see is that I can draw that carbonyl carbon, I have the rest of the molecule on one side, and I have an H on the other side. So this conforms to the general structure of an aldehyde. So let's go ahead and look at that other carbonyl carbon. So in this case, I can go ahead and draw my carbonyl carbon. I have the rest of the molecule on one side, and this time that carbonyl carbon is attached to an oxygen, and then I have the rest of the molecule. And so this is an ester. So that is what you should choose. Now, I want to make this clear. We do not consider this a ketone because a ketone has to have two R groups attached to either side. And there's only one R group here where this attachment to that carbonyl carbon is an oxygen. I didn't talk about an ether. You guys are not responsible for knowing what an ether looks like. You guys can look it up. Your book does go over what that structure is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe. Can one see you?